Well, blessed Thursday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. And we are uh, going slowly, but we're going through chapter 11 of uh, the book of Revelation. And we've had a vision of a temple that was surrounded by every side by the nations or the groups that were going against it. And the question has always been, what is the temple? Is it specifically Israel, or is it Israel or the church, or is it, more importantly, those who are part of the uh, gospel that Jesus is forming? And I believe it is the last. It is the gospel that Jesus is forming. It is the church of every nation that have chosen or are part of the mission of the Lamb. And so we have witnesses based on both lampstands and also olive trees. And olive trees typically have represented the temple, lampstands represent the church, and it shows that they are merged together, two of them, so that they are a legal witness according to Deuteronomy. And it seems that the nations are coming at this temple with all the destruction that reminisces of the time where Moses would put and pronounce uh, judgment on Egypt. And so we have earthquakes, we have the rivers turning to blood and other things. So all of these things harken back to stories from the Bible. And so the question always is, when will these things take place? And that's where I think that a wise Christian is to keep that open, keep vigilant, keep searching, but uh, don't uh, latch on to certain things quite readily. In fact, I think the wisest thing we can do is to be in prayer, to be in God's mercy while we see these things play out. It's not the most exciting thing. Well, of course, what you look for, and even as a pastor, you'd say, I want immediate answers. But I think we more important in the book of Revelation is endurance, waiting and seeing. And so we turn to um, a chapter 11, verse 7 and following. Let's read together. And we, when the two witnesses, by the two lampstands, by the two olive trees that are in the quarter of the temple, of course, they're staying for, once again, a time, time, and a time and a half, three and a half years, half through the tribulation of seven. When they have finished the testimony, the beast that comes from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their bodies, their dead bodies, will lie in the street of the great city that is prophetically called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. So here we go again. More images. Beasts, typical of the book of Revelation, usually symbolize, and this goes back even to the book of Daniel and to Ezekiel, governments, nations, the, the leaders of those governments. That's typically what the beast is, is the, so, not so much the leader as it is the government structure itself are called beasts. And it comes from the bottomless pit. Now, let's just be frank about what politics and religion are. Religion is, of course, the, the form of government, the form of structure that will take place, that points to a future time, a new heaven and a new earth. A beast, typically, or political things we get involved in, are the present order of things. And so... Um, my um, underpinning as a Lutheran has been what is called a paradoxical relationship. And that's a big word. It just means there's a lot of ambiguity. And should I say a lot of freedom? We as Christians, and this is in our Lutheran thought, that we can participate in structures of the earth. We can become police officers. We can be involved in government work for the sake of peace, but we have a limit to that, of course, when that uh, peace goes against our conscience or goes against our convictions, we 
are called to stand up for our higher power. But we are allowed to participate in that. And Luther included both not just um, being a clerk, but being a soldier, being an officer of the law, enforcing laws that are for the sake of peace. And his model from the Bible was Romans 13, that there is a legitimate use of government to curb things that are happening. But when a beast becomes unbounded, where it is no longer accountable to a higher power. So like I say, in our coins and in our money and in our constitutions, we always have reference to God and we have the, the motto in God we trust. We have limits to that power, but when the beast, should I say, when the government is unbound, it can work against the good things of God. And so, like I said, it's a paradoxical, it's a difficult relationship. But in this case, the church has already starting to separate. The people of God are already forming their temple. And so it is a time of persecution. And so there is time to be prophetically revolutionaries. And a lot of times this uh, chapter was used to justify revolutions. I don't have any specific reference to our revolution in America, but it has been used as a model of saying sometimes we need to step out of government and step out of the authority because it be has become so corrupted. It has become a beast. And so it says, when they had finished the testimony throughout the tribulation, halfway through the tribulation. And this is where some argue that the rapture happens in the middle of tribulation, not at the beginning or at the end, but in the middle. This is one school of thought. It says that the beast comes out from the bottomless pit. It comes from hell. This is not an authority that we are allowed to participate in. Because it is not uh, sanctioned by God. It is sanctioned by the forces that are against God. Similarly, in Israel and Palestine right now, we have people that are tragically being ruled by something called Hamas. And so we would say that the structure of their government or their leadership is not legitimate, even if the people behind that are benefiting from it are innocent. And so there's always a tension. Some have even argued, even on the other side of this Israeli conflict, that the Israelis are innocent, but their government is an illegitimate government. So there's always going to be that tension going on. Maybe you could talk about Russia, the Russian people versus the Russian leadership, and all the other countries around there. There's always that tension. So when they had finished their testimony, the beast comes out from the bottomless pit and makes war on them, conquers them, and yes, kills them. Now, we probably say, no, this is the book of Revelation. There should be victory. No, there is endurance. There's struggle. And as I said yesterday, that there is a time where we have to give up our mortal bodies. We have to give up the, the fight and go based on principle. I'm thinking of Thomas More in King Henry's court. He was once beloved by King Henry, but when King Henry went against the Catholic Church, Thomas More chose the Catholic Church. And for his loyalty, he was beheaded. But he is also known as a, being a faithful advisor to King Henry, he was also considered, and this is the name of the story about him, a man for all seasons. And a Christian, I think, needs to be opting for that. Our loyalty is not to a church structure. It's not to a government structure. It's to Jesus Christ, the one that animates all things. Jesus Christ and the Bible and following faithfully what God is teaching. And sometimes that will meet with success and favor, and sometimes it might mean a witness. And that witness is actually called a martyr, an opposition that might mean ultimate sacrifice. And so, their dead bodies lie in the streets of the great city that is prophetically 
Now, prophetically could mean future, but more importantly, it means the symbol of Sodom and Egypt. Why are Sodom and Egypt listed together? Because those were considered ultimately for the people of God evil cities. Sodom, like Sodom and Gomorrah, is the area by the Dead Sea. It's completely annihilated. Egypt always exists and still exists today. But it is not necessarily a, a place where God's people can find refuge. In fact, prophetically, what did Moses have to do? He had to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And so also their Lord was crucified. Our Lord was crucified. And so one could say that Jerusalem would also be included in the city. Now, I've gone a little over, but I just wanted to stress that these are symbols of unfaithfulness and the symbols of faithfulness in the midst of it is trusting that God will guide you through difficult circumstances. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.